Now that we looked at the translation constraint, you'll see that the scale constraint is very similar. In this case, we'll be constraining the blue square to the red square. We'll start by selecting the blue square and then adding a constraint and making sure that we add that scale constraint. Now let's take a look at the properties. Just like before, we can use the target to set a target for our constraint. In this case, our target's gonna be the red square. Now that we've targeted the square, when we change the square's scale, you'll see that the blue square also changes its scale. Let's explore a few other options. If we go back into the options, you can see that just like with the translation constraint, we have the strength setting. As a reminder, the strength setting allows us to customize how much our owner is affected by the target. Remember that this is an animatable property. Also like with the translation constraint, we have the offset toggle. We can also change the reference space that's being used to make the calculation. Also like the translation constraint, we can control which axis is being copied and we can also set limits. So for example, we could set a min value on both the X and Y and make them both 0.5. And we can also set a maximum value of 1.5. So basically what we're saying is that we can't go below 50% or above 150%. Now let's test those limits out. You'll see that as we increase the scale above 150%, that the blue square stops scaling. The same is also true if we go below 50%. One last thing to note is that if we end up duplicating our constraint owner, then you'll see that the constraint is also duplicated. So now when we scale our red square, you'll see that both blue squares are scaling along with it. This is also true for any other object that we've added a constraint to.